Hi, I'm Maddie. And I'm Sam, and we've had some fantastic questions from you guys coming in. Yeah, thank you so much. We really enjoy reading them. And first up, we got a great one from OK, You're Amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> you. You. You're amazing. You are amazing. No, was... you're amazing. Okay, you can stop that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, do we know if primates tend to be right or left-handed, like humans, or are they all ambidextrous? Well, the short answer is Yes, they prefer to use one hand over the other and they use this dominant hand to do everything from eating to picking things up to throwing things or high-fiving. And they can of course be ambidextrous as well, but there's a very easy way to tell what handed they are or what sort of dominant hand they have, which is by a dexterity test or a tool test, like using chopsticks. Okay, uh, what? Yeah. Uh, right hand first, just as many as you can eat in five seconds. You got a loge. Alright, uh, left hand? Okay. Oh, now I'm rubbish. <laughs> hang what? on, oh. hang on. Yes! I think I'm just generally rubbish. Well, Sam and I have clearly demonstrated <laughs> that we are definitely right handed dominant and we estimate between 70 and 95% of you guys are as well. 95%? Right handed? That's and scientists think that handedness might be down to which side of the brain you're using. So the left hemisphere of your brain tends to control speaking and fine motor skills, and that in turn controls the right hand side muscles of your body. The tool use is quite a good indicator when it comes to animals as well. So Caledonian crows, they will make tools with the right hand side of their beak, but when it comes to actually using the tool, they can be either left or right beaked. Beat. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. And actually there was a study on wild chimpanzees as well that saw a kind of similar phenomenon where chimpanzees were left-handed when fishing for termites with sticks, yeah. but then right-handed for cracking nuts. Although individual primates will tend to be sort of left or right-handed, there isn't much evidence to suggest a common handedness amongst primates. And there is a theory as to why lefties are so sort of rare amongst humans, which mm -hmm. is because we're very cooperative. As a society, Aww. we tend to sort of all mix together, be quite social, try to fit in, maximise efficiency, so that everyone can do everything the same way. Yeah. Um, but that would suggest that if we were totally cooperative, we'd all be right-handed. Right -handed. But it is important that there are some lefties out there because you kind of you need the competition for natural selection to you know do its stuff really. Yeah, you rare oddities, you. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is from Rick Hayward, who has asked, we are taught to wash our hands after going to the toilet because it can make you ill. So how is it that cats and dogs can get away with licking their own bums? Some animals go way further than that even. I mean, for example, rabbits and koalas are well known for eating their own poo or even the poo of their parents to sort of get a second run at nutrients or even to take on some of their gut bacteria, which is like friendly bacteria that you get in the supermarket from a much more disgusting source. <laughs> <laughs> but that brings us back to the question at hand. And although your poo does contain loads of, like well, it could possibly carry loads of diseases, parasites, bacteria that could make you ill, believe it or not, licking it, <laughs> Not that I'm suggesting you should, <laughs> but licking it is actually one of the safer ways to come in contact with poo. Yeah, I mean, your saliva, Rick, as well as cats and dogs, contains lots of disease-fighting proteins, so that's going to be the first layer of defence. And then it's got to get past the acid and like your stomach digestion. Then even if it does make it into your bloodstream somehow, you've got waves of antibodies just giving it a good bashing. So that's sort of three pretty decent layers. In fact, your body's kind of designed for your own stupidity. You're probably <laughs> bound to end up eating something you shouldn't do. Yeah, we're not suggesting that, that poo licking's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is a good point. <laughs> we're not, yeah. Don't do it. No. Uh, cats and dogs can and do get sick as well. Yeah. Generally yeah. not a good thing. And humans, we use our hands for lots of things, um, which is why we wash them fairly thoroughly. We use them for saying hello, for high-fiving, for eating, for tending wounds, generally speaking. You get in touch with other people. Just spreading infections all over the place. Yeah, don't lick your poo and wash <laughs> your hands. <laughs> all right, this put that on a t-shirt. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure answering your questions. <laughs> Please do subscribe and come back for more if you still want to. You've got the stomach for it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered how to catch a meteor? Well, you might be surprised to hear that it's actually
actually possible. In fact, it's simpler than you might think. Uh, we've got a subject that divides the internet, cat versus dog. We're going to see which one's a better drinker. But they don't have the same cheek muscles that we do, so they can't create suction. Okay. So they've got to find some way of getting their tongue to get water into their mouth. But their tongue morphology is completely different. If you've been licked by a cat, it's quite scratchy. And they've got these things called papillae, which um, are made out of keratin on their tongue, pointing up like little spikes. Okay. Um, so they drink the water and almost sort of scratch it like they do on your skin.